When I tell people that I work with my dad, they ask me what I do, and usually I tell them we squish peas. But of course, it's a little more complicated than that. I hope this video helps to explain it a little more thoroughly. The easiest way to explain it would probably be to take you through a day in the life of Chuck and Jesse McClurg squishing peas. We'll start at the beginning. We start early in the morning by packing up the car, our trusty old minivan, with all the equipment inside along with drinks, lunches, and anything else we might need during the day. We make day trips to vegetable processing plants in the area that might be running peace that day. We could go to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, or Maryland in any given day. Today we are going across the Bay Bridge and over to Delaware to our favorite place to work, West Farms. The drive will take us across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, over to the Eastern Shore, and into Delaware. Eventually we end up in the farmlands and to our destination. Once we get to the processing plant, there's a little bit of setup involved. This is one of the smaller, more rural places that we go to. Some of the other plants are much more industrial. Now I'll take some time to explain the machinery we use. Here you see the tenderometer, which is the machine that's used to tell how tender the peas are. Each company has one of these machines which they use to make these readings. The gauges allow calibration of the machine as well as a readout that tells pounds force of the peas that are being crushed. Another important part of the machine is the transducer. This piece is electronically calibrated in the shop by the manufacturers themselves. The part that we calibrate is called the cell. The manufacturer sends us these cells to be calibrated in the field with fresh peas. The cells are made up of solid aluminum and weigh about six pounds each. The blades, which you can see here, hang from the transducer up top. These come down with the machine, crushing the peas below, and the transducer reads pounds force that it takes for the blades to go through the peas, sending it to the gauges, which we can read. The bottom part, which holds the peas, has a base and a lid. The peas are placed in the bottom, and the blades come down from above, slipping through the corresponding slots. The machine takes about 30 seconds down and 20 seconds back up, so it's not a quick process. And that's why we can only get about 10 to 15 cells calibrated each day. As the blades come down, they squish the peas, which gives us a readout of the tenderness of the peas. The peas are squeezed out the bottom and the blades automatically rechecked up to the top. The gauge, which you can see here, is just about as easy to read in the field as it is in this video, especially in the intense sun, but we make do. Once the machine has run, the cell is taken out. The crushed peas are thrown out. The cell is quickly rinsed in some water and then refilled with peas for another run. Once we've run the cell seven times, which I'll explain in a moment, I'll usually take the cell over to wherever the hose is and begin to clean it while my dad starts on the next cell. The cleaning system is pretty simple and involves such complicated equipment as an old toothbrush and an unfolded paper clip in order to get all the peas unstuck. The washing process is necessary because once we've calibrated them, they're sent back to the company and should be in good condition. Sometimes they're in better condition than how we receive them. This process varies by the day. Here you see me getting sprayed a bit with water, which isn't too bad on a hot day like this. Other days it could be cold and drizzly and we'll do everything we can to stay dry. At some of the other processing plants, I'll have to go into the plants wearing ear protection and hair nets in order to reach a hose. Those places are somewhat less pleasant, and that's one of the reasons I said that West Farms is our favorite place to work. Now on to my other main job, recording and calculations. 
It works something like this. The first thing we run is called the Maryland Standard, and that's the cell to which all other cells are calibrated. We'll run this cell seven times so we can take out the highest and lowest numbers to account for any variables that might exist in the P's. We'll then take the average of the remaining five numbers. That average is then divided by 6.1, which is the standard cell factor for the Maryland Standard. The explanation for that is a little bit complicated, so just take my word for it that that's how it's done. When we divide by 6.1, we get the tenderometer number, which tells us how tender the peas are. We then continue on to the other cells. We record the cell manufacturing number, then we do the same as we did for the standard. Take seven readings, cross off the high and the low, and find the average. We'll do this for five or six more cells. After that, we run the standard again, taking the average and again dividing by 6.1 to get the tenderometer reading. Using that reading and the first reading of the standard, we create a sliding scale that goes from beginning to end of the tenderometer number. This gives us some allowance in case there were differences in the P from the top to the bottom of the bucket or changes that might have happened due to temperature changes or any other variables. Finally, we'll take each average from each of the cells and divide it by the number from this sliding scale below. This gives us the cell factor for each of the cells. Where the standard factor is 6.1, the other cells could be anywhere from 5.8 to 6.4. These cell factors are then reported back to the manufacturer, which they use to calibrate the corresponding transducers so that all the machines across the world are reading the tenderness of peas exactly the same. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to pack up and go home. And it's as simple as that. Now, all the cells and machines across the world are calibrated to the same standard so that the farmers and processors know what tenderness their peas are and therefore know what they should be getting paid for them. And now, as my dad always says at the end of a long day of pea squishing, it's Miller time.